Did you know that the first queen of France to rule by her own right was of Ukrainian origin? Yes, you heard it right. Let's delve into the life of Queen Anna. Born around the year 1024 in what is now the capital of Ukraine, Kiev, Anna was the youngest of three daughters of Yaroslav the Wise, the Grand Prince of Kiev, and Ingegerd Olof's daughter of Sweden. These were times when literacy was widespread in Rus, as evidenced by the numerous birch bark letters found from this era. Growing up in the prince's court, Anna received a strong education, preparing her for the grand destiny that awaited her. With a lineage like hers, it's no surprise that she would go on to leave a significant mark in history. So, the foundation of the future queen was laid in the rich cultural and intellectual environment of Kiev. Now let's embark on the journey that transformed Anna, the daughter of a Kiev prince, into the Queen of France. Anna's voyage to France was not a mere geographical transition, but a journey of transformation, of a Kiev princess morphing into a French queen. Born into royalty, Anna was the youngest of the three daughters of Yaroslav the Wise, the Grand Prince of Kiev. Her upbringing in the prince's court and a good education prepared her for the role she was destined to play. However, her journey to France to marry King Henry I was anything but smooth. As she stepped onto the French soil, Anna was met with a wave of opposition. The French court, steeped in its own traditions and culture, viewed Anna's Eastern European background with suspicion. This cultural chasm left Anna feeling isolated and homesick, a stranger in a strange land. But Anna was not one to be easily defeated. Turning to her faith for solace, she found comfort in prayer. And then, one night, a dream came to her. Saint Genevieve, the patron saint of Paris, appeared, assuring Anna that she would find favor in her new homeland. The saint's words were not just of comfort, but of prophecy, hinting at the crucial role Anna was to play in shaping the destiny of France. The dream was a turning point for Anna. It gave her the strength to face the opposition, to bridge the cultural gap. In her faith, she found the courage to stand tall, to not just survive, but to thrive in her new home. Anna's journey was not just about overcoming opposition and isolation. It was about transformation, about a princess becoming a queen, about an outsider becoming an insider. It was about the birth of a legend, the legend of Queen Anna. Thus, in the face of adversity, Anna found solace and guidance in her faith, preparing herself for her future role. Imagine the medieval French court, suddenly exposed to the exotic customs and traditions of the East. That's exactly what happened when Anna became queen. Born in Kiev around the year 1024, Anna Yaroslavna, also known as Anne of Kiev, was a queen consort of France married to King Henry I. Her father Yaroslav the Wise was the Grand Prince of Kiev, and her mother Ingegerd Olaf's daughter was of Swedish origin. Legends tell us of Anna's journey to France and the challenges she faced due to cultural differences and her Eastern European roots. Feeling isolated and homesick, she turned to prayer for solace. In response, she dreamt of Saint Genevieve, the patron saint of Paris, who assured her that she would find favor in her new homeland and play a pivotal role in shaping the future of France. But Anna's influence did not stop at the royal court. She is credited with introducing certain Eastern customs and traditions to the French. This exchange of cultures proved to be a transformative force enriching the cultural landscape of medieval France. Some of these traditions and customs may seem commonplace today, but back then they were considered exotic and novel. One such story tells of how Anna introduced the concept of a heated stove to the French. The stove, a common feature in every Russian home, was an unknown concept in France. Despite the initial resistance and disbelief, Anna persisted, demonstrating the practicality and comfort of a stove in the cold winter months. And it wasn't just practical matters Anna influenced, she brought with her a taste of Eastern cuisine. Legends tell of King Henry's delight at tasting chicken cooked the Eastern way for the first time, a testament to the cultural exchange that Anna facilitated. Thus, Anna didn't just become a queen, she became a bridge between two worlds, enriching the cultural tapestry of France. Ever wondered what Anna's thoughts were about her new home? Let's delve into a letter she wrote to her father. Greetings, my dear father, she begins, your faithful daughter Anechka Anna Yaroslavna Rurikovich, now the French queen, pens this letter. Where have you sent me a sinner? To France, to the Paris town, a different world indeed? Anna's words brim with homesickness and surprise. She laments, You said the French are smart people, but they don't even know the stove. As winter begins, we heat the fireplace. 
There's soot throughout the palace, smoke filling the hall, yet not a drop of heat. Only Russian beavers and sables save me from the cold. Her words portray a stark contrast between her homeland and her new residence. Anna attempts to bridge this gap. I called their masons, began to explain what a stove is. Drew blueprints for them, but they dismissed it as impossible. Anna's resilience shines through her words as she continues to champion the cause of the humble stove. Do not be lazy. Go to Russia. We have a stove in every wooden hut, unlike your stone chambers, she urges. Yet her efforts are met with disbelief and resistance. Madam, we do not believe. A closet with fire in the house and no fire, oh none none, they retort. Their rebuttal doesn't deter Anna. Instead, she uses it as a stepping stone to highlight the cultural differences even in culinary habits. You won't believe it, but they eat frogs. Even ordinary people in our country would be ashamed to take such things into their mouths, she exclaims. Through her words, we can perceive a resilient woman navigating through unfamiliar territory and leaving her mark in the process. Now let's explore the legacy of this remarkable queen. Born as Anne of Kiev around the year 1024, she rose from the court of her father, Yaroslav the Wise, to become the Queen Consort of France. Her life was a rich tapestry of Eastern European traditions interwoven with the cultural threads of medieval France. Anna's journey to France and her early years at the French court were marked by cultural differences and opposition. Yet she found solace in her faith, drawing strength from her dream of Saint Genevieve, the patron saint of Paris. This dream reassured Anna that she would find favor in her new homeland and play a crucial role in shaping its destiny. Her influence on French culture is undeniable. She introduced Eastern customs and traditions to the French court, enriching the cultural landscape of her adopted country. This cultural exchange between East and West was not just a testament to Anna's resilience and adaptability, but a transformative force that left a lasting impact on the history of France. In a letter to her father, Anna described the challenges she faced in her new home, from the unfamiliarity of French customs to the harsh winters. Yet she also showed her resourcefulness, adapting to her new environment while also striving to introduce elements of her own culture. Her efforts to explain the concept of a Russian stove to French masons, for instance, underscored her determination to bridge the gap between two vastly different cultures. Her legacy is not merely the story of a queen consort who journeyed from the east to the west. It is a testament to her strength, her resilience, and her influence. From her birth in Kiev to her reign in France, Anna navigated the complexities of her role with grace and determination. Queen Anna, a woman of strength, resilience, and influence, has left an indelible mark on the annals of history, proving that the power of a queen is not bound by her origin. Her story serves as a powerful reminder of the impact one woman can have, not just on a nation, but on the cultural fabric of an era.